The exterior walls on the addition are all framed. Got these two side walls that I framed and sheathed and applied house wrap while the walls were still on the ground. Got those lifted a few weeks ago. And in case you're wondering how hard it is to lift a wall of this size, this is a 22 foot wall and it is two by sixes, 16 inch on center with half inch plywood and two double two by 10 headers and two windows which add extra framing. So it's pretty heavy and we had five people to lift it and with five people it was very easy to lift. So probably could have done it with four but I would say for safety's sake a wall of this size requires four people to lift. The last wall just went in and this one has not been sheathed yet and the reason is I want to do that after it's up because the sheathing on this wall will actually go across this last stud and onto the last stud of the sidewall and that bridge will provide a lot of extra shear strength on the wall. So that will be today's project couple of details on this wall. One is you'll notice we've got some pretty high windows. We've got three windows and one of the challenges with this was I wanted from the outside I wanted to the those windows to be centered and evenly spaced but that didn't quite work on the inside because to, to have them precisely centered and evenly spaced uh, the middle window would have been too close to the bathroom wall on the outside of the bathroom and the bathroom window would have been too close to the wall on the inside. So I just fudged that a little bit, pushed those over about six inches either way and from the outside they'll look pretty much symmetrical. So kind of get, get it both ways. Looks right from the outside and looks right from the inside. Some other details on these windows. We've got double 2x10s on all the windows in the addition, which is plenty for an opening of that size. I framed them two ways. This is one way that is commonly done and perfectly acceptable, I think, which is to put a 2x6 under the header and use that as the nailing surface for the window. You'll see some comments out there that doing that uh, introduces the possibility of the load on the header crushing that 2x6. And I guess that's possible if, if you have a uh, you know, two-story house or maybe a five-story house. But this is a one-story house. I don't think that's likely. Um, so I think that is... Oh, uh, acceptable way of doing it and I don't think there are any code issues with doing that um, but just to try the alternate this is another way to do that in this case you don't have that issue you would never have that issue because the header is bearing directly on those supporting studs but I think either way is probably fine unless you have an unusually heavy load on the header and the, these headers are three inches thick and we've got a five and a half inch thick wall so we've got a good amount of space left over and that will be filled with insulation so that will raise the R value of that space above what it would have been just with a solid piece of wood. When, another way of doing the headers like that is to have the, the space on the outside so the header would be flush with the stud on the inside and there'd be that space on the outside and you fill that with insulation usually rigid foam and that gives you a thermal block on the outside which is advantageous and I've actually done that on a, on a few of the openings in this house the problem with that is then you have to do some extra work to get a nailing surface for the window or the door that you're putting in that space and it didn't seem to me that that was worth it. So 
the way I'm doing them now is I'm putting the space on the inside and I'll have two and a half inches of rigid foam in that in that space to increase the R value so we'll have a good uh, you know like R16 or something on the headers which would be nice one last little detail on these windows is the sills slope down a little bit towards the outside you see that level pencil mark there and you can see that the sill is tilted down a few degrees so any water that gets inside that opening will drain out and since we're using drain wrap on this house any water that gets on the sill will drain out and will go through that little gap that we'll have between the trim and the siding and the house wrap and it will drain all the way down the wall and come out the bottom. I've got some videos on this drain wrap but this is hydro gap and it's got these little plastic dimples on it that keep the siding a couple of millimeters off the house wrap so there's a gap going all the way down you've got a continuous drain plane going all the way down the wall so any water that gets behind the siding where the trim will drain out the bottom so the next step here is to just do a little bit more work making sure everything is plumb and then we can start laying the ceiling joists and I've got those sitting over here got a bunch of 22 foot 2 by 10s so we'll run those across here 24 inches on center which will match up with the rafters which will be 24 inches on center and then we can start framing the roof so we'll see you uh, next time for that.